Hello students, welcome to Pi Academy, the place for mathematics and science. Dear students, in today's class, we are going to continue the chapter Matter in our surroundings. And remember, this is fourth period of this chapter. Just recall the concepts what we learnt in yesterday's class. Yes, we saw, we answered for many questions with respect to different states of matter. What are those? One is solid, second one is liquid and third one is gas. And even we are given scientific reasons for many facts. Like why, a sol why the wooden piece is called a solid? Why water is called liquid? Why air is called the gas? Right? Now in today's class we are going to learn another important new concept to know this concept I am going to give you two simple situations the first one is imagine you have played in sunlight then you enter into your home ask any of your house members to touch your hand how do, and ask them how do they feel what they will say yes it is they feel it is warm right similarly and i'll give you another situation you will go for taking the bath when you are when you are when before taking the bath first you will check that whether water is hot cold or warm right see in all these situations we are using a form of energy can you tell what is that form of energy yes you are right this is heat energy then what you have understood about heat? Can you tell the definition of heat? Yes. Heat is a form of energy which makes us to feel warm or cold or hot. Right? Now, imagine that you will go, you will go for providing heat to an object. What are the changes that we can observe in, the, in that object? And what do you call these changes? These changes are called effects of heat. Then what are the effects of heat? You will go for telling one by one. And for that, again I am going to give you the simple examples. You take an iron ball. Then you will go for taking a ring also. Such that the iron ball can easily pass into the iron ring. Iron ring has a and also next you go for providing heat to the iron ball then you go for placing that in the, in the ring whether the ball passes into the ring no it will stuck there only it will be stuck there only why by providing heat it has increased its volume and what do you call what do you call this phenomenon it is called Thermal expansion. Got it? The increase in size of a body due to heat is called thermal expansion. This is the first effect of heat. And second one, you go for taking a beaker and take some amount of water in that and place it on the tripod stand. Okay. Next, take a thermometer and check its temperature. You can suspend this thermometer to the iron stand and check the temperature. Assume that it is showing about 22 degrees Celsius. You start providing heat to it, beaker containing water, using Bunsen burner. Then what will be the temperature? Whether it increases or decreases? Yes, it will increase. It may increase to 25 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Celsius and it will keep on increasing. Is it not? Next. Similarly, I am going to give you another situation. Again, you will go for taking a beaker and take some ice cubes, pieces of ice and place them in the beaker. Observe the temperature. The temperature now it is about 25 degrees Celsius. Then, and just keep on observing what will be the temperature, whether it decreases or increases. Yes, 
it is decreasing right your temperature will be rising here but here it will be decreasing but anyhow there will be change in the temperature it is also because of the heat when the body loses the heat then its temperature decreases when the body gains the heat then its temperature increases so change in temperature is also another effects of heat now let's move on to third one again you go for providing sorry you will go for taking another beaker take some ice cubes then start providing heat to it what will happen after some time you can come to know that it start melting that means here the body is changing its physical state from solid to liquid right this is another effect that is change in physical state of a substance so these are the three important effects of heat recall them one by one first one is thermal expansion second one change in temperature or increase in temperature and third one it is change of physical state of a substance now let me go for writing these point wise here i have written the definition of heat it is a form of energy which makes us to feel warm or cold then it's a si unit heat energy measured with a unit called joule and its cgs unit then it is calorie si means system of international cgs it is centimeter gram second unit and as joule and calorie are the are both units of heat or heat energy there is a relationship between calorie and joule we can write like this one calorie is equal to 4.182 joules next here i have written the effects of heat thermal expansion increase in temperature and change of physical state of a substance now okay just we got bit information about heat next we'll move on to know about temperature could you tell what is temperature or recall the definition of temperature yes again we have to uh, we have to take the same examples that is when we are going to take a bath first we will check the water how much hot or cold it is so without using the thermometer only we can go for deciding whether uh, uh, what amount of heat is present in the water or whether it is suitable for taking bath or not is it not so that degree of hotness or coldness of a body is called temperature okay dear students now let us come to know the differences between heat and temperature and before that please go for copying from here to here now let us come to know the differences between heat and temperature so i am going to write them in separate columns first column it is for heat and second one for temperature then what is heat we know that it is a form of energy which makes us to feel warm or cold i'll write the same it is a form of energy which makes us to feel which makes us to feel warm or cold and temperature it is the degree of hotness or coldness of a body it is the degree of degree of hotness or coldness of a body then now if you want to observe the temperature whether heat is responsible or not another simple question whether heat is responsible for temperature or temperature is responsible for heat yes you are right it is heat is responsible for temperature if there is heat then the body will be having some temperature we can write it as it is responsible for responsible for 
temperature temperature then what do you say about the temperature with respect to heat yes. temperature it is one of the effects of heat it is one of the effects of heat and we have already come to know that both are physical quantities because they can be measured if it is so what about their SI units SI unit of heat is here I'll write its SI unit is its SI unit what is that it is joule what about the SI unit of temperature we have heard that temperature it is like 35 degrees Celsius 98 degree Fahrenheit then 273 Kelvin means there are three different scales of temperature one is degree Celsius second one is degree Fahrenheit and third one is Kelvin which of these is the SI unit of temperature you are right it is Kelvin you are all right it's SI unit is Kelvin is Kelvin then heat present in a body can be measured by using a device what is the device it is calorimetry also known as calorimeter here are right it is measured measured using calorimetry or calorie meter then the heat present in a body or substance can be sorry temperature temperature of a body or a substance can be measured by using a device called thermometer here okay. it is measured measured using thermometer thermometer so these are the some differences between heat and temperature now again let us get more information about temperature you are right temperature we have already got the definition of temperature it is the degree of hotness or coldness of a body and this hotness or coldness of a body can be measured by using the units called degree celsius degree fahrenheit and kelvin so these are the three different units are taken from three different scales of temperature hence here I'll write scales of temperature scales of temperature what are these scales yes one is the uh, Celsius scale of temperature Celsius scale of temperature and second one is Fahrenheit scale of temperature F A H R E I Fahrenheit F A R E H E I T F A R E yeah, Fahrenheit H E I T Fahrenheit scale of temperature and third one is Kelvin scale of temperature Kelvin scale of temperature Dear students, you all may be thinking that if these are the scales and these are the Celsius, Fahrenheit and Kelvin are the units of the temperature, there must be relationship among them. Is it not? Let me write the relationship between the different scales of temperature. Let's move on to one by one. Here, relationship between degree celsius and kelvin do you know what is that it is kelvin is equal to degree celsius plus 273 it means if you want to convert the temperature from degree celsius to kelvin you can go for using this k equal to c plus 273 for example temperature the given temperature is 10 degree Celsius. Can you tell that in Kelvin? 10 plus 273 is 283. Clear up? This can also be written as 
degree Celsius is equal to K as it is minus 273. Understood? Yes. Let's move on to another one. What is that? The relationship between Celsius and Kelvin over Celsius and Fahrenheit. Yeah, I'll write. Relationship between degree Celsius and degree Fahrenheit. Do you know what it is? I'll write. Degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 degree Celsius plus 32. Is plus 32. Okay. This can also be written as degree Celsius equal to 5 by 9 degree Fahrenheit minus 30. Hope that you have understood. Here, yeah. this will be used for converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. And this is used for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. Now, let us go for taking some numerical problems with respect to these relationships. And one more thing, you may be thinking that what is the relationship between Fahrenheit and Kelvin? Very simple. If the temperature is given in Kelvin, it is to be converted into Celsius. Then using that Celsius, it will be converted to Fahrenheit. Hope that you have understood. Yes, please go for copying from here to here. Quickly. Now let's move on to some of the numerical problems. In that, the very first one, it is convert the following temperatures into Kelvin scale. And write numerical problems. Now, first one. The first sub question is, could you tell what is the boiling point of water in degree Celsius. I am taking very simple examples which you have already learnt in your previous classes. You are right, it is 100 degree Celsius. Now it should be converted into Kelvin scale. How? We have a formula for that, that is Kelvin scale is equal to degree Celsius plus 273. Is it not? It is equal to what is the uh, boiling point of water? It is 100 plus 273, it is equal to 100 plus 273 is, this is 373, therefore we can write 100 degree Celsius is equal to 373 Kelvin, hope that you have understood and please write the degree Celsius like this only, 100 degree Celsius, it should be separate. Don't read it as 100 degree Celsius. 100 it is a numeral and degree Celsius is a unit. Next, let me take another simple example. Second one is, what is the body temperature of camel? Or else, you may also tell, what is the body temperature of human being in, in degree Celsius? It is 37 degrees Celsius. Camel, it is 34. Here I'll write. Body temperature of healthy person is 37 degrees Celsius. Let us convert this into Kelvin. Again, K equal to degree Celsius plus 273. It is 37 plus 273. Go for adding. 7 plus 3, 10. Carry 1. 8, 7 plus 7, 8. 8 plus 3, 11. Carry 1. It is 310. Therefore, we can write 37 degree Celsius is equal to 310 Kelvin. Followed. Now, I am going to give you just two, uh, two problems for two problems for homework. You can do that yourself. One is 34 degree Celsius. It is the body temperature of camel. Next, another one. It is fifth one. Fourth one. Fourth one is it is 475 degrees Celsius. And one more. Fifth one is 1500 degrees Celsius. Clear up? Oh. 
you have to solve yourself these let's move on to another way in the second way we are going to convert the following temperatures into celsius here i'm going to give you the temperatures in kelvin here i'll write first one is it is 425 degree fahrenheit Sorry, let it be kelvin 425 kelvin it should be converted into celsius again we have a formula that is degree celsius is equal to k minus 273 right then what is kelvin kelvin is 425 minus 273 just go for subtracting 5 minus 3 it is 2 then 2 is there from 2 7 cannot be subtracted borrow 1 it becomes 12 12 minus 7 5 here it becomes 3 3 minus 2 it is 1 152 therefore we can write 425 kelvin is equal to 152 degree celsius clear okay dear students could you tell what is the freezing point of water or at what temperature water becomes solid in fahrenheit it is 273 kelvin right let us convert this into celsius again degree celsius equal to k minus 273 where temperature in kelvin is 273 then minus 273 which is equal to 0 therefore we can write 273 kelvin is equal to 0 degree celsius next remaining i'll give you example for homework you can go for working out your sum one is uh, it is 25 kelvin and fourth one is it is 511 and the fifth one is it is 125 kelvin yes we have to convert these three temperatures into degrees celsius now shall we move on to third one please don't go for copying anything afterwards i'll give you time now third one is please go through the question convert the following temperatures into fahrenheit here we will give you the temperatures in celsius it should be converted into fahrenheit let me go for taking simple one 100 degree celsius how do you convert this into fahrenheit we have a formula that is degree fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 degree celsius plus 32 you can remember like this 9 by 5 c as 9 c it may be your class and section 9 c by 5 plus 32 this is equal to here temperature has been given in degree celsius hence i write 100 in place of degree celsius plus 32 now cancel it 5 ones are 5 twos are 10 and zeros are 5 twenties are 100 29 ones it will be 180 plus 32 180 plus 32 is it is you can go for writing 212 therefore we can write like this 100 Degree Celsius is equal to 212 degree Fahrenheit. Followed. Let me go for taking some more examples. Before that, you have, you have to copy. First, you should write the heading. Numerical problems. Next, one. first question. In that, three sub questions. Sorry, two sub questions are solved, and three are given as homework. After completing this, go for second one. Here we have converted Kelvin scale into Celsius scale. Again, two problems are solved. Three are given for homework. After writing, after completing the last three, then go for third. Here we have converted Celsius scale into Fahrenheit scale. Only one problem has been solved. Yes, right up to here. Let's move on to second one. Here we are converting 
Celsius scale into Fahrenheit, right? We have a formula for that. That is, degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 degree Celsius plus 32. It is 9 by 5 degree Celsius. How much it is? 37, right? Plus 30. Then you go for cancelling it by 5. It will be easier. 5. Uh, 5, 6, uh, sorry, 5, 7, uh, 35. 5, 7, 2 will remain. It becomes 20. 5, 4, uh, 20. Plus 32. It is equal to multiply 9 with 7.4. 9 fours are 36, 3. 9 sevens are 63 plus 3. It is 66. 66.6 plus 32. Right. Now, this can be written as, observe it. Add these two. It will be 66 plus 32, 98. 98.6. Hence, we can write 37 degree celsius is equal to 98.6 degree fahrenheit dear students when you observe this fourth problem you can come to know that here we have taken the body temperature of healthy human being it is 37 degree celsius but many times we hear uh, the we hear about the uh, temperature of the fever as 98 98 degree, then 100 degree, 102 degree, then what are these? Actually, whatever the information given by the doctor, it will be in degree Fahrenheit. Got it? Yes. Now, here these two, third one, 50 degree Celsius, it should be converted into Fahrenheit by your cell phone. Next, 200 degree Celsius, it is also for moment. Whereas, fifth one, it is minus 15 degree Celsius is there. As it is negative temperature, I am going to convert this into degree Fahrenheit. Here I am right. Degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 degree Celsius plus 32. It is equal to 9 by 5 in bracket. What is the temperature in Celsius? It is minus 15 degree Celsius plus 32. Cancel it. 1s are 3s are. 9 3s are 27 minus 27 plus 32. How much it will be? This is 5. Clear up? Therefore, we can write minus 50 degree Celsius is equal to 5 degree Fahrenheit. Hope that you have understood. Next, we are going to take some more examples where we convert. Fahrenheit scale into Celsius scale. This is fourth one. I'll write it as convert the following temperatures. Following temperatures into what it is? Celsius. Celsius. Let us take some examples for this. Here I'll write first one. Assume that temperature has been given in Fahrenheit as 100 degree Fahrenheit. It should be converted into Celsius. For the conversion of Celsius into Fahrenheit, we have a formula. Recall that formula? Yes. It is degree Celsius is equal to 5 by 9 into degree Fahrenheit minus 30. Even the same formula can be used. But the simplification will be different. At last we get the right answer only. Observe. Here 5 by 9 into. What is the temperature in degree Fahrenheit? It is 100 minus 32. It is equal to 5 by 9. 100 minus 32. It is. It is 68. Right. It is equal to. Now. Let us go for cancelling it. Before that, you just go for multiplying. 68 fives are. 68 tens are 680. Half of that, it is 340. Right? Divided by 9. Then go for dividing 340 by 9. It is 9 threes are 27. 
you will get 7 carry down 0 then 9 7s are 63 7 will remain 70 9 7s are sorry put decimal and take 0 70 again 9 7s are 63 7 7 7 you will get recurring decimal and we can write 37.77 and so on approximately it can be written as 37.8 in bracket and write approx conclusion therefore 100 degree fahrenheit is equal to 37.8 degree celsius here yes, please go for copying from there to here second one i hope that you have written up to here now observe second one with respect to converting degree fahrenheit into celsius it is 32 degree Fahrenheit. Now, it can be written as degree Celsius is equal to 5 by 9 degree Fahrenheit minus 30. This is equal to 5 by 9 degree Fahrenheit is 32 minus 32. It is equal to 5 by 9. What is 32 minus 32? It is 0. 0 into any number is 0. Therefore, we can write 32 degree Fahrenheit is equal to 0 degree Celsius. What is 0 degree Celsius? It is related to one of the situations. What is that? It is the freezing point of water. Then, the freezing point of water in degree Fahrenheit is, that is 32 degree Fahrenheit. Clear? Huh? Yes. Now, I will go for taking two more problems. Please go for copying that. Observe this. Fifth one. Convert the following temperatures from Kelvin to degree Fahrenheit. Dear students, it's important concept. Please do concentrate more on this. Observe. First, I have taken very simple one. 273 Kelvin. Why particularly this number has been taken? With the calculation only, you can come to know that. We do not have the formula to convert <coughs> Kelvin to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Kelvin. Hence, what we will do? First, we will convert Kelvin to Celsius and then Celsius to Fahrenheit because we have a relationship between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Observe it. First, let us convert this into Celsius. Degree Celsius is equal to Kelvin minus 273 is it not it is equal to kelvin scale how much it is 273 minus 273 which is equal to 0 the students we have already come to know that 273 kelvin is nothing but 0 degree celsius clear now this 0 degree celsius should be converted into fahrenheit here I'll write Fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 degree Celsius plus 32. This is conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Observe it. It is equal to 9 by 5. What is Celsius scale? It is 0. Here I'll write into 0 plus 32 which is equal to 32. Therefore, we can write 0 degree Celsius is equal to 32 degree Fahrenheit. Clear up? But what we want? We have to convert 273 Kelvin into Fahrenheit. 273 is equal to 0 degree Celsius. 0 degree Celsius is equal to 32 degree Fahrenheit. Hence, you can write, you can write 273 Kelvin is equal to 32 degree Fahrenheit. See, all these temperatures are freezing point of water. What is freezing point of water in Celsius? 0 degree Celsius. In Kelvin, 273 Kelvin. In Fahrenheit, 32 degree Fahrenheit. Understood? Okay. Now, we are moving to one more. Observe. In this, temperature has been taken as 373 Kelvin. Here I'll write First, convert this into Celsius. 
degree Celsius is equal to K minus 273, where temperature in Kelvin scale is 373 minus 273, it is equal to 100. Clear? Up? Therefore, 373 Kelvin is equal to 100 degree Celsius. What is 100 degree Celsius? It is the boiling point of water. Clear? Up? Then boiling point of water in Kelvin is 373. Now it should be converted into Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit scale is equal to 9 by 5 degree Celsius plus 32 which is equal to 9 by 5. What is the te temperature in Celsius? It is 100 plus 32. 1s are 20s 20 are 29s are 180 plus 32. It is equal to 200. 12. Clear? We can write 100 degree Celsius is equal to 212 degree Fahrenheit. We are going to convert 373 Kelvin into Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit is 212 degree Fahrenheit. So this is. So boiling point of water in degree Celsius is 100 degree Celsius. Kelvin scale. 373 Kelvin and Fahrenheit scale 212 degree Fahrenheit. Hope that you have understood. I'll go for taking one more example from this. Please copy from here, here to here. Quickly. Observe it. One more. <coughs> it is 170 Kelvin. You are on right. This is degree Celsius. It should be converted into degree Fahrenheit. Degree Celsius is K minus 273. It is equal to 170 minus 273. How much it will be? This is minus 103. Right? Yes. Now, degree Celsius equal to minus 103. That means, uh, it is temperature from Kelvin to Celsius is this is 170 Kelvin is equal to minus 103 degree Celsius. But we are going to convert that into Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 degree Celsius plus 32. 9 by 5 into minus 103 plus 32. It is equal to minus 9 into minus has been taken here. Now cancel it by 5. 5 twos are 10, zeros are 5. 20 is a 100, 3 will remain 30, 5, 6 is a 30, plus 32, which is equal to, then uh, multiply by 9, 9, 6 is a 54, 5, then 9, 0 is a 0, plus 5, 5, 9, 2 is a 18, 185.4 plus 32, now subtract it. It is 4.5, 5 minus 2 is 3, 8 minus 3 is 5, it is minus 1. So, minus 153.4, clear up. Therefore, we can write 170 Kelvin is equal to minus 153.4 degree Fahrenheit. Now, I am going to take one more. Uh, the last problem of this concept, the, this question was also asked in the examination. There is one particular magnitude or particular number of the particular temperature at which Celsius scale and Fahrenheit scale are equal. How can we come to know that? Yes, question was asked in this way. What is the temperature at which Celsius scale and Fahrenheit scale are equal? equal. It was asked for 1 mark as well as 2 mark. One, for 1 mark, you can go for writing the answer directly. But for 2 marks, we, we have to show the calculation. I will write the same question. Keep observing. This is 6th question. The question is, what is the uh, calculate? Calculate the temperature at which 
Celsius scale and Fahrenheit scale are equal. Yes. How can we come to know that? We do not know the temperature. Hence, can we go for taking this as X? Yes, here on the right. Observe. Let degree Celsius is equal to degree Fahrenheit. They are equal. We do not know what is the temperature. I have taken this as X. We have the statement which converts Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius. Anyone can be taken. Here if you go for taking degree Fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 degree Celsius plus 32. So in place of C and F you should write X. Here I write X is equal to X 9 by 5 into X plus 32. Then go for solving X. How do you go for solving? X is equal to you can take LCM. Or else, one more thing you can do, take 32 to the left hand side, it becomes x minus 32, it is equal to 9 by 5 into x. Go for cross multiplication, 5 into x minus 32, it is equal to 9x. Hope that you have understood. Then multiply by 5, 5 into x, 5x, minus, 5 into minus 32, 32 tens are 320, 32 fives are, it is 160. 1 is equal to 9x. Then minus 160 is equal to 9x. Transfer 5x to the right hand side becomes minus 5x. It is equal to what is 9x minus 5x? 4x, which is equal to minus 160. x is equal to minus 160 divided by 4. x equal to 4 fours are 16, then 0. x equal to minus 40. Dear students, this is the temperature at which Celsius scale and Fahrenheit scale are equal. Means minus 40. Here I Therefore, minus 40 degree Celsius is equal to minus 40 degree Fahrenheit. Hope that you have understood. Or you can also go for using this also. That is degree Fahrenheit, sorry, degree Celsius is equal to 5 by 9 into degree Fahrenheit minus 32. Same you get. That is minus 40. Repeated I have been telling. This one is much important in the examination point of view. If it is asked for one mark. Directly you go for writing minus 40. If it is for two marks. You will have to follow this step. Yes. Please go for copying from there to here. Dear students. In today's class, we completely focused on learning about different scales of temperature. Now, we are moving to the new concept. You all know that we have already studied about the different states of matter. What are those? Solid, liquid and gas. And you also know that how will be the arrangement of particles in solids, liquids and gases. Here I am going to draw the figure to show the arrangement of particles. You have to tell the physical state. Yes, this is first one. Keep observing and what about your response with respect to this? Yes, you are right. It is in case of solid. In solid, all the particles are arranged tightly. There will be very least gap, nothing but intermolecular space is least, but intermolecular force is maximum. What about the kinetic energy of the particles? Will it be less or more? It is less. That is, these particles will be having least kinetic energy. Please do remember these three points intermolecular space, intermolecular force, then kinetic energy. Let me go for taking another one, another matter. Observe how will be the arrangement of particles in this matter. What do you say? Yes, they are loosely packed. In which case it is? It is liquid. Then what will be the intermolecular space? It is 
little bit so and the intermolecular force that is also uh, intermolecular space is more comparatively solid intermolecular force is less comparatively solid and what about the kinetic energy kinetic energy of the particles in liquid is more than that of the kinetic energy of the particles in solid is it not and one more state physical state of a matter here i'll show you the arrangement of particles they are arranged randomly they are moving in all the directions then this is possible in case of gas right what do you say about inter uh, intermolecular space on comparing with solid and liquid it is maximum what about the intermolecular force it is least on comparing with solid and liquid and kinetic energy of the particles we know that the particles are very free to move hence they possess more kinetic energy more amount of kinetic energy on comparing with solid and liquid then dear students you all may be thinking that what we are going to learn again you are going to answer for your question by answering my question we have one important matter which exists in all the three states of matter it exists in so solid as liquid as well as gas and this matter is also being used in our day to day life it is possible to it is it is not possible to imagine our life without this matter can you tell yes if you are guessing you just check the check your guessing i am going to tell the answer water is the only liquid which exists in all the three states see that water it exists as solid example ice cube right and water it exists in liquid that is the normal water what we are using and it exists as gas the example that is steam right once i repeat water is the only liquid which exists in all the three states of matter solid liquid and gas then the question may be arising in your mind that how this is how this is possible for a liquid called water to exist in all the three states and what all the properties are responsible yes let us dear students let us go for answering all these questions in the next class okay yes before concluding today's class i'll remind you whatever we have covered please do practice them today itself without fail and particularly we come across numerical problems then another important thing is tomorrow we are going to conduct the weekly test both on mathematics and science get ready for that and monday again we are going to continue the same chapter matter in our surroundings okay so with this let us stop the class thank you very much